Hello everyone, and thanks for tuning into today's second or third video, depending on whether you're a channel member. So we're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for this video. Day 10 will take us to the 23rd of December, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS at the set on thumbs. We're running throughout a couple of weeks, so we'll have a look at CFS V2, of course, at the end of the video for the next four weeks. So I'll get over that for you. In a moment, just say that first video saves our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We're releasing each day of 42 day forecast exclusively for channel members. And if all of that wasn't enough, this is your 10 to 14 day uh, uh, I'm doing uh, right now. So please like, share, subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everyone, uh, for doing that. The gals weather bits. Right, okay, we're going to start off with the latest wind flow map from EarthNullSchool.net. So we've got low pressure, deep low pressure in the North Atlantic between Green Iceland and an active weather system coming into the uh, country as well. That's going to be a slow moving system. We'll be, we'll be bringing quite a lot of rain, particularly to the North and West, over the next uh, 24 hours and then further southwards and eastwards uh, through the beginning of uh, next week. Some very strong winds associated with that as well. Central England temperature is sitting at 8.2. That's uh, 3.6 degrees above the 61 to 1990 average. It's provisional to uh, the 12th of December to yesterday. These were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. We're looking at Whitney today in Oxfordshire. The red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Whitney. Uh, home of my good friend Kieran Bushnell. Hello, Kieran. Um, so, uh, the uh, upper air temperature is going to be above average. Are you doing all right, Kieran? Are you broadcasting today, our friend? I'll have a little listen later when I get home from the gap. Um, anyway, uh, the upper air temperature is going to be above average for uh, the next uh, week or so. I bet this is a surprise, won't it, Kieran? <laughs> I bet we're going to find the upper air temperature is coming down as we move up towards Christmas. So, a cooling trend, how cold will it go, though? Well, quite a bit of scatter we see there. So, we've got the milder ensemble members up here, but we've also got colder ensemble members down there. Hmm, the plot thickens, doesn't it? And you'll notice that the uh, GFS operation run goes quite calm. That's just after Christmas. We also have the operation, the control run, I should say, this thick blue line. Getting quite cold as well uh, around and over Christmas period. So, hmm, Christmas cold snap. I wonder. So, I'll tell you why it can be quite a bit of dry weather for the next couple of days. Uh, for Whitney, but it can turn more unsettled by through next week. Quite a bit of uh, rainfall to come as we move up towards the uh, Christmas period. Let's have a look at Snow Row. So, not much to see, but we do see uh, one. Quite significant spike there uh, for Whitney on Christmas Day, interestingly. <laughs> and a few little snow spikes after that. Doesn't look great for snow, but of course that's all extended range and unreliable time frame stuff. Regardless, right, well, what have I done there? So let's go down to the... <laughs> messed it up again. What are you doing, Gab? Want to go there? Um, no, where am I going? Where am I going? Hold on, let's pause the video and work out what I'm doing. Right, there we go. Uh, temperature anomalies for the next uh, five days. Day of December significantly above average be 10 to 14 day is uh, much closer to normal precipitation anomalies next seven days the 20th of december very wet in the west and the northwest but dry in the south and in the southeast the uh, 8 to 14 day with that goes dry in all areas so there's a cooling and drying trend going on there question is how cold is it going to get well, let's start going for chart data. This is the latest UK Met Euro run. It's looking for midnight on Tuesday. A trough of low pressure coming in from the west, beginning to drop southwards as well as it does so. But a deep area of low pressure bombing out in the North Atlantic there. Um, now, that's going to keep unsettled. We're going on secondary low towards the end of next week, bringing some very wet and windy weather are sweeping in from uh, the west. So looking unsettled Atlantic driven. But up to the 20th of December, at least it will be mild. ICOM, 
A game of a trough heading in uh, from the West in Monday and Tuesday. Then deep area of low pressure through Wednesday to Thursday and Friday. Properly wet, windy, stormy. That might be a rainstorm on Friday. It certainly looks like we've got some tightly packed ice bars. If that bring gale and severe gale force winds, then wouldn't you know it, yet another deep low coming in there at the end of next week as well. So it looks thoroughly unsettled as we're going through uh, next week. Plenty of areas of uh, low pressure sweeping in. That appears to be yesterday's uh, run. <laughs> so, not going very well this video, really, is it? Until 144 hours in today's, and uh, beyond that, it flips to yesterday's run. But, you can see, but, like, yesterday, it was going for quite a deep low, quite a big Atlantic storm on the midnight run, and uh, today it still is doing so, actually. That gets us uh, to the end of today's run, as far as we can get to. Right, well, it's going well, isn't it? Uh, we can't show you the KMA. Website's down. Not met Metro Steel, but like the KMA is not updated. So we'll move on to the GFS midnight run. Remember, we are very reliant on these third party websites. So if they go wrong, third party models, if they go wrong, then uh, we have problems. But we're going to make the best of it anyway. Now again, deep area of low pressure bombing out in the North Atlantic, south of uh, Greenland as we go to the middle next week. That will strengthen the zonal westerly flow and bring this area of low pressure sweeping in from off the Atlantic. So looking thoroughly unsettled there up to uh, the 20th or 21st December. Then a ridge starts building. Uh, across many parts of Europe as we head up towards Christmas. So higher pressure beginning to get itself going towards Scandinavia. Um, now that probably brings a change to frost and fog for Christmas. Doesn't look great, you know, from a snow perspective. In fact, there wouldn't be any snow in fact, except right on the top of Scottish mountains probably. But the ridge may bring some uh, frost and fog down to south in a more seasonable feel. Although it is fundamentally quite a mild ridge. High pressure takes over as we go uh, beyond Christmas. So an area of high pressure dominating uh, the weather. And a bit of a hint there approaching the new year. This gets us to 29th of December. Just a little bit of a hint that high pressure is trying to get up towards uh, Scandinavia. Whether it does so successfully, though, remains to be seen. But GFS 6, then, in comparison, again, bring a trough in from the Atlantic through the middle part of next week. Deep area of low pressure bombing out to the south of Greenland around Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, very significant low around Friday. Might be a name storm. That one brings gales or severe gales into the north. And then the same idea as we go into this pre-Christmas weekend. We find higher pressure starting to build over to the east of the country. Not especially cold, but probably bring the change towards frost and fog and a more seasonable feel as we uh, run up towards Christmas. So Christmas itself on this GFS run, looking anti-cyclonic. We've almost got a Scandinavian high bound Christmas Day, not quite like centering towards Denmark and the Baltic Sea, but it's enough to be bringing in like an easterly flow that looks rather cold, probably, you know, not pretty mediocre. I'm looking at your bread section at the moment. I don't think there's much cold air over the continent coming in with that. But so it would be a lot a lot colder than would be used, used to and would be a proper seasonal uh, feel there, courtesy of that Scandinavian high. And the high is sort of maintained, really, as yet to 29th of December, uh, beginning to slip a little bit, turning in more towards the southeasterly, but still, I would have thought, generally uh, quite cold uh, feeling as we approach the new year. This is how the upper air temperatures are looking. So that's the upper air temperature across Europe for 21st century. You see no real cold anywhere uh, across Europe in terms of an upper air temperature perspective. Very poor, really, for the time of year. That's because it's been so mild through uh, this month so far. Now, the content can cool down very quickly. It could all flip around within, like, a couple of days. All you've got to do is... Uh, so, I'll explain this. All you've got to do, cool the continent down, bring some very cold air in, is, like, to remove the high pressure. We've got to retrogress it, really, in that direction. And then all this cold air that's lurking up here, where via a trough, will plunge southwards. And, um, like, within 24, 48 hours, uh, much of Europe can be engulfed in a big freeze. This is a continental climate, not quite as dramatic with the flips 
up, you see, in America, as the flicks is up, see, America and Canada and whatnot, so, because we're moderated by the Atlantic. But even so, the continental climate, things can change very, very quickly. But that's Christmas Day, not much in the way of cold upper air temperatures. Uh, beyond that, when we do start getting some uh, colder upper air temperatures are coming in minus 5 at 850 HPA. But real cold begins to plunge southwards there around the back of behind in towards the western parts of Russia with minus 10 Celsius uh, isotherm. And that starts sinking down eventually, wouldn't you know it? <laughs> in towards the Vulcans, Greece, Turkey, Black Sea, etc., etc. Um, whilst we remain protected by the high pressure. Now, on that high pressure, it is still going to be cold. So if we have a look at the dew point, I suspect we will see the dew points looking quite a lot colder or becoming quite a lot colder than the upper air temperatures would suggest. But I've got a bit of a tangent with this, so sorry everyone, but I really wanted to if you might be finding it interesting anyway, how cold how cold snaps can sort of develop. So uh, upper air uh, dew point, I should say, uh, for a Christmas day looking like that. So again, got the uh, zero dew point there in the south and south, that's not to produce frost. Anyway, and quite a cold, easy win. Um, but two points do start turning colder as we're running into extended range. Notice the continent is cooling down uh, with the uh, dew point. <coughs> Well, there are definitely uh, indications here about returning colder around Christmas uh, and beyond it. Um, you know, by the time you get from 29 to 7, much of the looking very cold uh, with those uh, G points. So, um, definitely, you know, a cooling trend there from uh, the GFS. Uh, right, okay, well, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. Why don't you drop a comment? Let's say what you think about this sound, all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gareth Williams and get them to subscribe too. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. We need to put on around 40, 35, I think it is now, subscribers to get to uh, 20.8k. So you could get a sub. That'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. And maybe you can send a little donation to uh, Gareth Williams for our PayPal page if you've enjoyed the videos and the content this season. Of this year, but I know it hasn't been as good as like um, most of the years that we've done on Gauss weather bits. So I'm very sorry about that. But yeah, if you have enjoyed what we have produced, then uh, we've got our PayPal page. You can find the link first in the same description with this video. Consider sending a donation to Gauss weather We'll give you a shout out. Maybe on a Merry Christmas from Gav for you or somebody else. And we're uh, very, very happy to do that. Thank you so much, everyone, for all of the support. Right, GM again, chuff of flow. Coming in from off the Atlantic around Monday and Tuesday. That'll be bringing showering conditions with it. Then a deep low to the south of Greenland as we go through Wednesday and Thursday. Secondary door to local brings some gales and some severe gales on Friday into next weekend. Uh, low pressure is starting to drop south. Heights beginning to rise to the north and to the northwest. That looks quite interesting, doesn't it? That seems Eve of Christmas Eve, high pressure trying to get up towards Iceland, and we're bringing in a northeasterly flow at that point. Not much cold air across Scandinavia to tap into with those northeasterlies, but would certainly be a lot colder than would be used to it, and would certainly deliver some overnight frost and, you know, just a generally sort of seasonable Christmassy type feel. Hardly a Christmas 2010, though. And then the East Jam rounds it all off again with a chop of low coming in from off the Atlantic on Monday. Then we've got a proper old battering on our hands through Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Thursday to Friday, we've got secondary areas of low bringing plenty of wet weather in with them. Uh, the low pressure starting to sink southwards as high pressure builds uh, to the northwest on Sunday, 21st of December. So quite a big blocking area of high pressure getting going then. Uh, winds going around to the east. That's a proper block setup. High pressure, south low pressure uh, to the east. That's Christmas Eve looking quite interesting, I have to say. We've got an easterly coming in. So it's going to be cold. It'll be cold Christmas Eve if that comes off. Maybe windy showers into the southern and eastern regions. More likely just, you know, frost and fog and that kind of thing. Uh, the high pressure on Christmas Day sinks down, sinks down across the country, but it's a cold area of high pressure, so it will produce significant overnight frost and fog. And the anticyclone uh, carries on and continues up to the 28th of December, still with high pressure centred over country at 1,030 millibars, mostly dry, cold and frosty. Where will the high go after then, though? 
Mm. This is a forecast based on it in Shemron from Tometcho.com. So plenty of rain to come over the uh, next few days. And then wet and windy weather sweeping later next week. That's the end of week. Deep area of low heading in there. Uh, bringing heavy rain, gales and whatnot. Heading into uh, next weekend. Well, we've then got the low pressure to sink southwards. So the wet weather begins to uh, move away to the south. We're kind of stuck across the country up to 21st then, but we'll move away to the south as pressure builds to the north. Notice how winds have turned into the east, but not cold enough to turn the rain to snow. These were the options on the table within the Esham Ensembles uh, for day 10 last night for 12 Z run. We haven't had an update. I signed it Met's office uh, today, unfortunately, so far. Uh, but uh, I thought we'd show you these from last night. So 17 members of the Esham Ensembles, 22nd of December, 17 members of the Esham Ensembles showing high pressure over and to the east. The country got 10 and showing high pressure to the northwest. That brings the wind in from the northeast. That's like what the Esham operation is showing uh, at the moment in the extended. Uh, we've got nine with high pressure uh, to the north, winds in from the east. We have got eight, looking rather flat and westerly, high pressure is uh, to the south, low pressure to the north. We've got four with deep low pressure right up top country. And then we've got three with high pressure just to the north in two weeks' time. These were the options that we had. And it get to, got us 27th of December. 14 members of the ECM ensembles uh, with high pressure Scandinavia. Winds in from the east. 11 with uh, high pressure to the northwest. Winds coming in from a northeasterly direction. 7 with high pressure over the top of the country. A further 7 with high pressure away to the west. 6 with high pressure uh, just to the north. And a further 6 with high pressure to the south. Low pressure to the north and bring in the wind the west or southwest direction. A range of options are there, but most of them are both day 10 and day 14 involving high pressure around or before, around and up to and beyond Christmas period. It looks like there's good agreement that we could turn things dry and colder for Christmas. CFS V2, but the question is how cold? <laughs> CFS V2, these are 500 millibar high throttle broken down. Next week period, the first week period, takes us from the 13th to the 19th. Seven next week sees a low pressure coming in from off and talking mild, wet and windy. Week two is going to be the 20th to the 26th of December. Low pressure in the Atlantic again. Looking mild, wet, windy with winds in from the west and from the southwest. Week three is going to be the uh, 27th of December to the 2nd of January, high pressure to the south and the east, drawing up a mild southerly flow, not a cold Christmas there. But week four is more interesting. It gets into the new year. It's the 3rd to the 9th of January, high pressure blocking to the north and also to the uh, west. Chop of low over country. Uh, Mac could well start to bring colder air in from the east of the north east. CFS taking longer to get there, but still going in the same direction as a short range model output. But I think I'll be watching, focusing on the Christmas period because I think we have the chance here of our first cold Christmas for quite a long time. Now, by cold, I'm just really talking about frost and fog, not snow. At this stage, because it doesn't look as though, even if we bring in those easterly winds, the upper air temperatures are going to be cold enough to produce snow. So I'm not talking about snow. I think we have got a chance, like a cold Christmas, from a frost and fog perspective. And then the question will be how far we develop that pattern, maybe as we go in towards the new year. So uh, the plot is thickening. Watch this space. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals, Webs, and Get to subscribe to. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for doing that. That's it for today's content. I'm off to do eight hours at What the Gap. But uh, I can tell you that we are bringing back Sunday live stream. Uh, maybe the last Sunday of December, 28th, possibly into the uh, new year. But like Sunday live streams will be coming back. I'm not going to be doing any more uh, 2 till 10 shifts after uh, next Sunday. My final 2 till 10 is next Sunday, 21st of December for the winter anyway. And so uh, Sunday night live streams, 6 till 7, gap time, will be coming back. I know so many of you have missed those Sunday live streams. I've missed them um, well. They're coming back, so uh, it's just at the right time as well, maybe. All right, well, you enjoy the rest of your Saturday, Bo, and for this one, it's all for now, and thanks for watching.